art. How would you characterize this? Well, I think uh, you've got a couple of things going. As, as we discussed off camera, it is amazing in this age of social media that she was arrested on the first, and it didn't get released till yesterday when the U.S. markets were closed. Huawei and, CFO, you're talking right, about. Right. Right. So uh, that's there. In my pre-opening comments, I had noted that we looked like we were going to do a test of the Thanksgiving lows. We're getting very close to it. Um, that would be Dow 24,268 and the, the S&P 2631. Um, so we're... Uh, we're there. We're, we're basically the there. Pretty. Right, yeah. So, so uh, you want to see if they can hold here, then you can make some credible uh, point that we're, we've tested a double bottom and you could get a rally of some substance. If they slide through here, um, then, then you're going to look to test much deeper lows and, you know, beyond this land, there'd be dragons. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, testing, where, where, what is the test if this fails? Are you in this, this new 2400 camp? Yeah, no, I know. I, I think that becomes a, uh, a likelihood. But, you know, you, we've yet to see the dramatic effect of this, uh, this arrest. Again, as uh, we discussed off camera, it would be like um, uh, the Chinese coming in and arresting Steve Jobs' son or something. You know, it, it, this is a very high-profile lady, and it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Mr. G uh, has to say about it. So that's what you're seeing. That, that, you know, to, in answer to Morgan's question, what what is the market reacting to? They are saying, "Gee, this is such a high-profile thing. How can we get the tariff truce started again?" So they think it's. Uh, pushed way to the side. But this is also a market art, isn't it, in the last couple of months especially, that has been unable to shake off any one particular adverse thing, especially when there's other things to grab at to worry about, right? You still have oil that is not quite stabilized. Um, the Fed, you know, they tried to walk things back, but still we're looking at a, at a rate hike in December. We have a jobs number tomorrow. So it just seems as if the market's in sell-first mode almost no matter what the headline is. No, I think you're dead right. And, and it's a combination. You know, it was interesting, as, as you and I discussed, uh, it was uh, uh, the day before the Brexit announcement, and then you broke a moving average, and they moved on from there. It, it, also, you had this uh, uh, thing about the yield curve wouldn't go away. And with it came the idea, is that mean a recession's looming? And you look at things like uh, the housing numbers and how far back will Powell go, and, and, and where are we? So, there is a sense of uh, uncertainty. I, I, you know, I've been uh, beating a dead horse here all, all year, as Carl keeps reminding me, about interest rates. You know, and I'm, I've been a one-and-done guy that, you know, you're going to do it in December. And I think they're going to have to walk back from it. And you're beginning to see that. You've seen a couple of central banks this week walking back from where they were. So uh, um, the world is not what it appears. And you're right, Michael. I think the market senses that vulnerability on several levels. Although that would be very similar to 2015, right? You had a rate hike in December, the first one of the cycle, and then it was none for 2016, as you had predicted. <laughs> um, and the market was in the process of trying to figure out if that was a decent low. Uh, it took a while after December. Yeah, no, it, 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 I think they're scrambling around. So the two big wild cards are uh, trade with China, because there is some sign of a kind of slowing globally, maybe not a full slowdown. And then the other one is the Fed. So we'll go from there. Uh, what does construct the ideal jobs number for tomorrow? Oh, um, I, I would think that you've got to be careful with ideals. We know what the bulls want, the, 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 uh, the Fed doesn't want. So I would say you don't want to see a big jump in, uh, in wages and wage pressure. Um, I think you want to see it kind of continue in this line. If there's any kind of surprise move, uh, you know, if the labor scarcity, so to speak, uh, looks like it's really building, that could spook the Fed a little bit. But the first line I would watch, wages and things like the average work week and whether overtime's building up. Before I let you go, you mentioned interest rates. Yield on the 10-year Treasury right now, 2.835. We've seen you know, pretty dramatic move in the last couple of days. In the past, it's been this sort of nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for investors. The fact that investors do seem to be piling back into treasuries right now. What's the read through there for the equity market? 
Well, it's, it is somewhat of a warning sign because what it, the, this whole thing about the curve is the Fed's still talking mildly tough, so that raises the very short end. But the fact that the intermediate and longer end are coming down says that people don't believe that you're going to see that, that kind of high pressure. So uh, uh, I'm still in the same camp. I think one and done, and uh, you may actually get to see a rate cut um, as late in 2019. Last, last thing is we, we haven't even mentioned Brexit or Tuesday's vote yeah. or May's travails or Italy or France. Yeah, right. 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 And that's part of uh, Michael's full plate. Um, that yeah. you, you get past and one. And also gets you back to 2016 because we were <laughs> looking at something like that as well before we even had the, the first Brexit vote.